Welcome back to another little bit of list, but this time we're going to be looking at Brogan, and we're going to have to go through a few things to, to get set up there, because it seems strange just because of we're so used to how programming languages normally work. So here's a function called hi. When we run it, we can see that it does the first expression, evaluates the second expression, and then evaluates the third expression. And whatever the last expression is in a function, that's the return value of the function. So this prints out a couple of things and returns 11. And this could be nil, um, in which case it will return nil. And if we remove that, we'll see that this string is actually returned as a value uh, because print will also always return the thing that it's printing as well as printing it out to the screen. So it looks like it's, we've got it twice here, but it printed it out once and then it returned the value and that came out of the function. Let's change it back to nil for a second. What's interesting here is we've got these three forms. It's defined that we will execute these or evaluate these in order. But we've got some forms like if, where we do if something is true, so 5 is less than 10, then we'll do this, otherwise we'll do, oops, that. So we'll, we'll evaluate this or we'll evaluate that, and that will be the return type. So in this case, obviously 5 is less than 10, so it returns 10. And if we now check if 5 is greater than 10, uh, that's going to fail, so it's going to return 20. But we can only have, you see down in the uh, mini buffer down here, we can only have one form in each of these spots. So if we wanted to um, print high and then return 10 or return 20, well, this isn't going to work. Now we've got three things, and this isn't going to know which one of these to do. Um, so we're going to use program program is going to run each of the things inside it in order. So kind of like we had up here. And that's a backwards way of defining it, as we're going to see in a minute. However, um, now we can say we've got this high again function. It's going to take a value. And if the value is equal to 10, then the function is going to say that it likes that number and return a new number. And otherwise, it's going to be rather confused. So let's, let's run that. So we go um, high again. And we'll pass in 4. And it's like, what? Beyond strange fool, and returns nil. Notice that it didn't return this string because this is the last thing in the progon, uh, progon form. So this evaluates to whatever the last thing in the form evaluates to. So it evaluates this, then it evaluates this. And of course, if we pass in 10, we're going to get what we expect. It's going to, this is going to be true, which means we're going to do the kind of then clause. Um, which is this program form here. It's going to evaluate this, then it's going to evaluate this, and it's going to evaluate this and return the result. Again, just like above, if we put some form in here, we're going to get that back instead. This is evaluated, and then whatever the last thing is in the program, that's going to be returned. Well, that's what the whole form is going to evaluate to, is strictly the correct term. We don't want to use return here. And then the entire if is going to evaluate to whatever, uh, whichever the, the result, ah, the value of whichever program was evaluated. Cool. So we've got that. And that can be kind of handy. To be honest, um, you don't use this explicitly that much outside of macros because what we're really doing here is we're setting up somewhere where side effects matter. Because if we look at this function down here and we run it, uh, we notice that we get nil and nothing else happened because we didn't do anything with these values. We added together one and two. We would have got three, but we didn't do anything with it. We multiplied these two numbers, but we didn't do anything with it. We didn't bind it to anything. We didn't print it anywhere. We didn't do any side effects and we didn't return it. So essentially these two lines were a waste of time because we didn't do anything with it. So program is kind of interesting. Program is this thing where like it's only valuable if you're having side effects. And this is one of these things of like you hear sometimes that Lisp is a pure language. It's not. Common Lisp, which is has that kind of direct heritage back to old the original Lisp, isn't pure in any way. We use side effects all the time. For example, we've looked at the other videos using setf, which goes and sets a value in something that already exists. That's mutating things. We've looked at how strings are mutable arrays of characters. Um, like mutation is through Lisp everywhere and so yeah it's not a pure language now this thing that we've gotten used to up here in the functions where we can just write a few things like this without having to use program um, 
is actually because there are forms like defunct, like let, like labels, like quite a few others, and you can look them up, which have what are called an implicit progen. And it says an ordered set of adjacent forms appearing in another form and defined by their context in that form to be executed as if they were within progen. So defun has an implicit progen. So within the context of defun, as they would say, like these are going to be evaluated as if they were inside progen. So it's exactly the same as this. And the reason we don't have this, the reason we don't just have defun take one expression and you have to write progen everywhere is you'd have to write progen a lot. And that's kind of rubbish. So like it's so common um, that it's better for it to just be implicit like this. And if you want to have just one expression, you know, just have one expression. There's nothing stopping you. And so it's kind of one of those no lose situations where you can just have these extra lines when you need them. It's extra forms that are going to be evaluated as if they were inside this guy. Um, okay, so that was progen. Won't go into too much more into that. We're going to look at a couple of uh, related uh, ones, which are prog1 and prog2, but we'll do that in another video. So thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you in another little bit of list.